It is a pleasure to welcome you to the third edition of the lecture series on advancements in geotechnical engineering, from research to practice. The AGERP lecture series is a pro bono initiative led by Dr. Partha Mishra and Professor Sarat Das. Initiated in 2020, it is aimed at disseminating the coupled learnings from academia and industry on some of the key topics in geotechnical engineering. The International Workshop on Unsaturated Soils was hosted in 2022 during the third edition of the AGERP lecture series. The following lecture on monitoring the hydrological response of small-scale slope models was delivered by Dr. Josip Peranik at this workshop. Dr. Josip Peranik received his PhD in Civil Engineering from the University of Rijeka in 2019 on the topic Importance of Geotechnical Cross-Section Unsaturated Zone for Landslide Occurrence in Fleisch Deposits. His main research topics are rainfall-induced landslides and the behavior of unsaturated soils. He has published his research results in several international journals and at many national and international conferences. He received recognitions from the University of Rijeka, Faculty of Civil Engineering, for his research achievements in 2019 and 2020. During the fourth regional symposium on landslides in the Adriatic Balkan region, held in Sarajevo in October 2019 under the auspices of the International Consortium on Landslides. He was awarded for the best PhD thesis in the field of landslides completed in the last five years. He is involved in several international and national research projects and is the leader of the IPL 256 research project of the ICL's International Program on Landslides. He is an active member of the Croatian Landslide Group, World Center of Excellence on Landslide Risk Reduction of the ICL. He served as a guest editor of a special issue of the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health and as editor of the Proceedings of the Fifth Regional Symposium on Landslides in the Adriatic Balkan region. He is a lecturer of several undergraduate and graduate courses and has received several recognitions and awards from the University of Rijeka for his commitment to teaching. He is a member of several national and international scientific and professional associations and a board member of the Croatian Geotechnical Society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Misha, for a nice introduction. Thank you, Professor Das. <clears throat> Hello and good day to everyone. So my name is Josip Peranić and I am a postdoctoral researcher here at the University of Rijeka Faculty of Civil Engineering in Croatia. First of all, I have to say that it's my pleasure to be today here with you. And uh, I have to thank uh, the organizers, uh, organizers of this great event for this opportunity, but also uh, for your effort as we were uh, just uh, talking before this uh, session in, in, your, in, in trying to connect uh, practitioners and scientists that are uh, interested in unsaturated soils from all around the world. Now my special thanks go to uh, Dr. Mishra, who uh, I had the opportunity to meet very recently in Sydney during the 20th ICSMG, and who kindly invited me not only to attend this workshop, but also to present some of the work that uh, we have been conducting for the last few years here uh, in our geotechnical laboratory. I also have to thank uh, Mr. Tivari, who has covered me, I have to say, very promptly with all the data, all information in very short period of time, and everyone who is actually working in the background uh, of this uh, lecture series on advancements in geotechnical engineering. So the title of my talk is Monitoring the Hydrological Response of Small-Scale Slope Models, and uh, everything that I will show uh, today uh, was obtained through different activities uh, conducted within a framework of this research project, a project that is entitled Physical Modeling of Landslide Remediation Construction Behavior under Static and Seismic Actions. It is a four-year research project that was started in October 2018, so we are now approaching its final stage, and the project is founded by the Croatian Science Foundation. There were or there are many persons that are involved in different activities on the project. Um, there are many scientists, uh, technicians, but also students. So I hope uh, you won't mind if I just quickly mention uh, all of them or some of them. Uh, uh, I, I might miss uh, some also, uh, and I'm, I apologize for that in, in, in advance. So uh, Professor Jerko Arbanas is um, 
leader of the project and also head of geotechnical chair, associate professor Vedra Jagodnik and our assistant professors Martina Vivoda Prodan, Nina Czech and Petra Jagodnik, uh, also Sara Pajalic, who is a PhD candidate uh, on this uh, project. We also have a strong, a great support uh, from our technicians, Juraj Stella and Due Kalejic, as well as from many students who have uh, contributed to various activities during the project. So I would like to uh, take this opportunity and to thank uh, all of them uh, as well. Uh, just to put into the context today's presentation before starting with its main part, uh, one of the main uh, objectives of the project was to develop platforms that would enable studying downscaled physical landslide models uh, under static, uh, which implies rainfall, as indicated here in left figure, and also seismic uh, conditions, that is, earthquake conditions, as, as shown in figure in right. In the following figures, you can see some details of small scale slope models with different elements that are installed as remediation measures. For example, in the upper left figure, there is a slope that, is, that was built in St. Carolyn mixture as a slope material used uh, with some gabion walls that are used as remediation measures. While in the lower figure in the left, there is also slope that is built that was built in similar type of material however in this figure you can see piles and some drainage elements that are used as redemption measures <clears throat> these two figures in right show two sandy slopes at the end of the test basically uh, after the tests were finished um, Slopes were exposed to similar rainfall conditions as indicated here with the blue and black lines. However, the one in the left had no remediation uh, measures applied while you can see gravity wall and also some drainage elements for the one in the uh, right part of the uh, figure. So the idea is to compare a hydro, hydromechanical response of a performance of slope of scaled slope models in general, which are built of different soil types and in different geometric conditions, uh, for example, with different inclinations, with and without remediation measures applied while exposed to different loading conditions, that is exposed to simulated rainfall and or earthquake conditions. And it is hoped that uh, the data obtained, the results could be used to predict behavior of real scale slopes, so slopes uh, in natural uh, landslides in natural size, as well as to improve design procedures and selection of appropriate landslide remediation measures. So the focus of this presentation is on the equipment used for monitoring um, the hydraulic response of downscale slope models under simulated rainfall conditions in 1G. Uh, I would say that this is something similar in one part to that presentation that um, I delivered during the 20th ICSMG. And the results obtained uh, for seismic actions are not included here. Also, uh, the tests um, that are conducted on slopes with remediation measures applied uh, are still being conducted or evaluated as these uh, activities are scheduled for the last part of the project. So only the results obtained for slopes without remediation measures are included here in this presentation. This is the outline of the presentation. I will start by saying very briefly a few words about the motivation for this kind of research. And then we'll uh, present you the main capabilities, uh, main features of the platform for testing small scale slope models under 1G and uh, different rainfall conditions. Uh, the equipment for hydraulic monitoring will be described in more details with uh, special attention on poor water pressure sensors and soil moisture sensors. Some examples of data collected and data interpretation uh, put into a context of small scale rainfall induced landslides will be presented. And I will um, finish my presentation by providing some general conclusions. 
So I believe that everyone interested in this workshop will agree that landslides are um, uh, rather uh, quite complex phenomena that very often require a multidisciplinary approach uh, to get a complete understanding of uh, these, these phenomena. And some of the aspects that are contributing to the complexity of rainfall-induced landslides are related, for example, to highly nonlinear material properties or so-called unsaturated soil property functions of soils that are involved in the rainfall infiltration and landslide initiation process. Uh, usually, if we would uh, want to quantify how the transient rainfall infiltration affects the stability state uh, of a slope with time, then um, we would uh, have to know um, so-called soil water retention or soil water characteristic curve, hydraulic conductivity function. Uh, we would need to know or quantify how uh, change in soil moisture or change in soil suction affects shear strain properties uh, for all of soils that are involved in transient seepage. So this is something that has to be known, has to be defined in this kind of analysis. As we know, for the same suction, the soil will tend to retain more water when undergoing drying process than when undergoing a wetting process. And this is something that is known as hydraulic hysteresis, and it is exhibited by the soil as a function of the flow direction through the soil. And it's something that has a significant impact on, um, I would say, all aspects of behavior of unsaturated soils. And it's something that usually should or has to be taken into account. And then there are very often difficulties that are related to quantification of uh, time-dependent boundary conditions. Uh, and this is uh, especially the case uh, along the soil atmosphere interface where multi multiple processes can take place simultaneously. And it is not always uh, enough to consider only positive, that is downward fluxes uh, or quantities, but also uh, evaporation or evapotranspiration has to be quantified and uh, incorporated into the analysis and so on and so on. So um, close observation of hydromechanical response of slopes exposed to different rainfall loads has a crucial role in understanding the driving mechanisms and factors that are affecting rainfall-induced landslides. And in that sense, small-scale physical landslide models, of course, in combination with uh, advanced monitoring techniques, allow accurate observation of the hydraulic and mechanical responses of slopes uh, exposed to precisely controlled initial and boundary conditions. And this is something that uh, makes them a valuable, to valuable tool for accurate measurements of quantities and variables controlling the stability phenomena, while uh, at the same time they provide us with a high, high quality data that can be used for, uh, for example, calibration uh, purposes of numerical models that can be used for validation of analytical solutions and so on. Here you can see, um, here presented just briefly some of the main features and capabilities of the platform of the Flume for physical testing of scaled slope models under 1G rainfall infiltration conditions. So uh, the Flume itself was designed to enable initiation of landslides by artificial rainfall. It consists of steel elements, um, steel plates and plexiglass uh, sidewalls, of course, transparent plexiglass sidewalls. Uh, so three basic steel segments form the upper, middle, and uh, lower parts of the platform. They are one meter wide and uh, 0 0.3, 1 0.4, and 0.8 meters long, respectively. Uh, there are joint connections between the lower and upper part, and also the height in the upper part is adjustable so that the models can be built with different inclinations, ranging from, for example, 20 up to 45 degrees. There is a system of drainage pipes that is inserted uh, through the plexiglass wall in lower part of the model. And this is something that allows us to, for the groundwater level to be controlled during the test. And of course, for the draining or the water to be drained after the, the experiment once the test is finished. 
Um, there is also a geogrid that is attached um, a geogrid glued at the bottom of the flume, um, which prevents slippage between the impermeable steel plate and slope material. And also we use uh, liquid rubber and silicon uh, for sealing small gaps between um, plexiglass sidewalls, perforations in structure um, once the models are constructed. And it is something that ensures that uh, um, our models are watertight during the test, uh, that is during the simulation of rainfall, or at least uh, to minimize uh, the amount of water leakage during the test, as, as you will probably notice in some uh, figures that we had some small uh, amounts of leakage in different tests. Um, we know that aside of hydraulic properties of soil, it is rainfall characteristics that have a crucial role when it comes to rainfall induced landslides. And thus, I would say that uh, development of the rainfall simulator um, during one important step of the, of the project was the development of the rainfall simulator that would meet all specific requ requirements of the project. Um, rainfall simulator that was developed consists of uh, three independent branches equipped with uh, four different full cone spray nozzles. Uh, there is the main controlling block unit, which is connected to a water supply, consists of the elements that regulate the work of rainfall simulator, such as pressure regulators, manometers, flow meters, filters, and so on. Uh, high density uh, polyethylene pipes convey pressurized water from the controlling, uh, controlling block to three uh, sprinkler branches, which are adjustable in height, and uh, these are delivering um, the required rainfall intensity to upper, middle, and lower section of the model. And at uh, the reference pressure of two bar, uh, depending on the type of the axial flow full cone nozzle that is used during the test, uh, rainfall intensities that can be simulated with this uh, setup are in range from less than 30 up to more than 150 millimeters per hour. Of course, setup can be easily modified to achieve any other rainfall intensity or, um, or um, uh, let's say, pattern of rainfall that is desired. Uh, regarding the monitoring equipment, it can be divided in two main parts. One is a geodetic monitoring uh, system, and it consists of a um, system of high-speed stereo cameras. Here you can see uh, GOMS uh, uh, Aramis measuring system that we are using uh, with uh, both uh, platforms. There is a terrestrial laser scanner, and we are also using the SFM uh, photogrammetry surveys prior to and after uh, the test is finished. A geodetic monitoring system uh, basically consists of a network of miniature sensors, and these enable uh, measuring, observing changes in soil moisture, poor water pressure or soil suction, uh, soil temperature, pressures, displacements, forces, and so on. And here you can see some details from, um, for example, preconditioning of Terros 32 or Terros 31 tensiometers and uh, calibration of uh, these sensors uh, in clean sandy material. Um, now we are moving to the part where, where I will describe sensors that we are using to observe hydraulic response um, in our models. But first I will try to describe how these were adapted or uh, what were some of the basic requirements that selected uh, sensor, selected equipment had uh, to, to fulfill, had to meet. And again, as an accurate monitoring of the hydraulic response of scaled slopes, along with monitoring of slope displacements, slow movements in uh, slope models, uh, it's something that provides essential information on variables that are controlling the instability phenomena of rainfall induced landslide, and thus the development of a suitable set, a sensor network for test conditions and the uh, selection of appropriate measurement techniques are, I would say, crucial steps in development of uh, small scale physical landslide models. 
uh, there were several requirements specific to this project that had to be considered during the selection of the equipment for monitoring uh, of hydraulic response in slope models. Of course, one of them was that the information on uh, soil moisture and uh, pore water pressure had to be available at appropriate time intervals, which um, again necess necessitated the use of digitized sensors in combination with suitable data loggers. Then another important feature of the project was, was that um, it envisaged uh, testing of various soil uh, textures or soil types, ranging from clean sand to clay-like soils, and therefore selected measurement equipment had to be able to cover a wide measurement range, which can occur in different uh, soil types. At the same time, it should ensure sufficient precision, resolution, and responsiveness of the system. And the solution was found in the so-called capacitance-based soil water content sensors, which provide rapid detection of changes in uh, soil moisture or uh, soil volumetric water content for a wide range of soil textures and conditions, and in simultaneous use of mini tensiometers for rapid measurement of pore water pressure and matrix action values within the measurement range of uh, standard tensiometers. Um, the soil water potential sensors based on the dielectric constant measurement method were intended for measurements in soils where high uh, soil suction values were expected. And we have managed to enrich this um, setup very recently by obtaining a pair of high capacity tensiometers uh, as well, or so-called full range tensiometers. The, these are from the UGT company from Germany. And uh, these devices enable measurement in the range from uh, 100 kPa above the atmospheric pressure up to um, 1,500 kPa uh, of matrix suction that is in negative pore water pressure range. Another consideration uh, is related to the uh, to data redundancy, as the data had to be collected simultaneously at several depths and along different profiles in slope models. Uh, to, to get a complete uh, picture, complete idea of uh, temporal and special evolution of different uh, variables uh, during different stages of experiments. Um, here you can see typical measurement profiles we have adopted in most of our experiments. So there are three, um, three profiles that um, collected uh, the data in uh, central part uh, of the upper part of the slope. Here it is indicated uh, in yellow as H profile. In the middle part of the model indicated in white as M profile. <clears throat> and L profile indicated in orange uh, that is located in central part of the lower section of the form. And basically we are using Teros um, 22, Teros 31 mini tensiometer and Teros 12 soil moistures, moisture sensors to observe changes in soil uh, moisture and soil suction or pore water pressure at 6 and uh, 18 centimeters of depth in upper section of the model. Uh, we have Terra's 10 sensors installed at each six centimeters uh, of depth to measure changes in soil moisture in middle part of the model with two uh, mini tensiometers, Terra's 31 added at monitor points uh, at six and 18 centimeters of depth, which enables simultaneous measurement of soil moisture and pore water pressures, that is matrix action in this case mostly, um, and how they change during the test, which was found to be especially useful for this kind of application. And uh, there are also Teros 12 uh, soil moisture content sensors and Teros 31 mini tensiometers that provide information on soil moisture and pore water pressure changes at 12 and 24 centimeters of depth in the lower section of the model. Uh, as indicated here, we were also using Teros 32. Basically, these are shown in this figure as well. Um, uh, so they were used uh, at the same uh, location in L profile during very early stage of the project. And I would say those were only due to uh, limitations in our budget at that stage of the project. <clears throat> 
And finally, uh, the last consideration uh, was that uh, we had to be able to use the same monitoring equipment, both in combination with uh, platforms for testing uh, um, downscaled slope models in static and seismic uh, conditions. And these two platforms are located in two different laboratories uh, in, in our, at our university. So regarding the soil moisture content, we are using uh, Teros 10 and Teros uh, 12 soil moisture sensor from meter group. They enable indirect measurement of the volumetric water content of porous materials such as soil. Uh, frequency uh, and uh, time domain uh, reflectometry, FDR and TDR, are among the most popular techniques for indirect determination of uh, soil moisture content today. And both Teros 10 and Teros 12 uh, sensors adopt the first or so called um, capacitancy method to predict the amount of water in soil based on soil's uh, electrical properties. Uh, the idea behind the so-called capacitancy method is creating electromagnetic fields using electricity by using, for example, two metal electrodes, such as those at Teros 10 or Teros 12, and uh, uh, anything that is uh, located or put in between those two metal electrodes uh, tends to store that electromagnetic field for a certain period of time. And the material is called a dielectric material, and it has its um, charge storing area, which is uh, often called as a capacity. Uh, dielectric constant um, is uh, something that uh, describes uh, its, its quantity, describing uh, the charge storing ability of a certain matter or material. And here you can see that on the very side, uh, uh, very right side of the spectrum, there is a water which can store significantly larger amount of charge than all other constituents that can be uh, typically found in soil. Uh, for example, air can store essentially no charge. There is organic matter, soil minerals, there can be ice present in soil pores and so on. Thus, uh, if the amount of air and water are the only thing, uh, only things that significantly change in soil with time, or in other words, we can assume uh, for most of geotechnical problems and uh, engineering situations that the amount of organic matter and soil minerals is more or less constant for the element of soil considered or element of soil that the volume of soil that, that is being sensed, then the idea behind this method is to use sensors which, which can measure the electric permittivity of soil and then calibrate these measurements against the water content of a soil, which in this case is expressed in uh, volumetric terms. Of course, Top is the person who has put this approach uh, uh, into use for soil scientists um, back in 1980, and here is a famous uh, Top's equation. Here you can see some of the basic technical information for uh, Teros uh, 10 and Teros 12 sensors, including their measurement range, accuracy and resolution, as well as quantities they can measure. So in addition to, um, to the measurement of the volumetric water content, Teros 12 uh, provides information on soil temperature and uh, electric conductivity of soil as well. Regarding the sensors for measuring the soil water potential, depending on needs and funds available, the following devices were obtained uh, during a certain stage of the project. Uh, so we have standard tensiometers with uh, uh, vacuum gauges, digital tensiometers, Teros 32, also mini tensiometers 31, as well as Teros 21 soil water potential sensors, and I will briefly uh, describe them in the following few slides. <clears throat> so. Teros uh, 21 is designed to be a maintenance-free magic potential sensor designed for long-term continuous measurement, and it was origin its intention is to be used in field application. Uh, Teros 21 sensor um, use, uses an approach that is similar to that of Teros 10 and 12 volumetric water content sensor. Basically, the sensor measures the dielectric permittivity of a soil matrix that is of this porous ceramic disks to determine its water content. As the dielectric permittivity uh, of those is highly uh, dependent on the amount of water present in pore spaces, 
And given that uh, porous ceramic disks tend to reach um, hydraulic equilibrium with the surrounding soil, measured water content of the solid matrix is used to determine soil's water potential from, uh, of course, known soil water retention curve of these porous stones that are uh, uh, manufactured. They are produced in way to cover a wide range of, of water potentials. That is, um, uh, they have pores of different radii. And larger pores are those that are in charge or related to measurements in the wet end. And pores with small radii, radii are responsible for measurements in the dry end range. And the main limitation in the dry end measurement range are related to, as suggested in this, uh, in this figure, are related to um, measurement inaccuracy uh, as the, um, there is high change in water potential caused by a uh, small change in uh, measured uh, water content values. On the other hand, um, the air entry value of the largest pore in ceramic, which was uh, 9 kPa for the first generation and now it's 5 kPa for the second generation of these sensors. Uh, it can limit measurements in soils, uh, basically in uh, coarser uh, uniformly graded soils such as sands with lower and air entry value in the sense that the saturation of this pore of this would not begin until the water, uh, lower water potential values are reached. Both Teros 31 and Teros 32 enable measurement of pore water pressure values up to uh, 50 kPa above the atmospheric pressure, which uh, if we consider dimensions of the downscale slope models uh, should be enough to cover all values in the positive measurement range for most situations, while measurements in the negative range are limited by the cavitation process. That is, we have measurement range that is typical uh, for uh, of standard tensiometers, and we can measure matrix suction values up to approximately 85 kPa's. Why one of the major, I would say, pros or advantages of Teros 31 sensors um, is their their very quick responsiveness and miniature dimensions, which makes them um, uh, especially useful uh, for this kind of uh, application for downscale slope models. While Teros 32 um, they, their, their major uh, advantages, uh, advantage is, I would say, uh, the ability to be refilled without the need for the removal from the, from the soil. And uh, in this section, um, I will present some uh, examples of uh, hydraulic monitoring results that we obtained for different soil materials, different geometric initial boundary conditions. Um, the obtained results, as you see, are interpreted and discussed in the context that is relevant to the study of mechanisms uh, and factors that are driving the instability of rainfall-induced landslides. And uh, more specifically, for two different soil materials and uh, two different types of tests, uh, particular details were singled out and uh, will be discussed. Uh, so the first example considers the um, uh, initiation of a scale slope model built in clean sand uh, inclined at, at 35 degrees. Uh, the slope material used uh, in this model um, was uh, basically uniformly graded fine sand. Um, it had, has a friction angle of around 35 degrees, so slightly uh, below that value, and saturated hydraulic conductivity of around 10 to minus 5 meters per second. Uh, the material was installed, as in all other cases, on all other tests, using the LADS under compaction method by compacting uh, five layers, uh, six centimeters height. And in this way, we reached uh, slope, slope models that were 30 centimeters high. The targeted initial moisture content was 2% uh, in, um, in, gravimetric in gravimetric terms, while the targeted initial relative density was uh, 50%. And once the model was built and all, had, all of the equipment was installed, the slope was exposed to a constant rainfall intensity of, uh, of around 73 millimeters per hour until the end of the test was called. 
Here we can see uh, the relevant measurement profile located in lower part of the model and position of TERRS 10 and TERRS 12 sensors for monitoring changes in soil, uh, soil water content during the test. Uh, measurement results are shown in this figure and uh, they indicate uh, several interesting points. First of all, for all measurement profiles, um, that is for lower, middle and upper profile, it was observed that um, although the slope was built uh, mixing and compacting soil layers to achieve homogeneous initial water content distribution within the model, um, it is retention properties of uh, this material, of uniformly graded uh, sandy material, uh, that always resulted with uh, reduced mo moisture content in the uh, monitoring points located uh, close to the slope surface, while higher volumetric water content values were measured uh, for sensors that were installed at higher depths. Then uh, for a very early stage of the test that is uh, marked here with red square or uh, very soon after the rainfall was uh, started, the results indicate top to down saturation or advancement of the wetting front as the volumetric water content um, starts to increase in a way that the increase is increase is observed for the first four sensors located at 6, then 12, 18, and finally for the sensor located at 24 centimeters of depth. However, later, in a later stage indicated with the blue square, there is a kind of inversion in, in measurement results as moisture content increases first for the deepest monitor point and it reaches a certain constant value which indicates uh, saturated conditions. And later the same is observed for monitor points in the shallower part, which basically indicates that the bottom up saturation and groundwater, groundwater level rise is occurring in, in, in our model. These uh, observations can be also reproduced using the images taken with the GOMS uh, Aramis system of high speed uh, stereo cameras that was previously mentioned. Here we are focusing on a part of the model that is marked in yellow square in this figure. Here in figure A uh, and uh, figure in right, you can see conditions at the start of the test, that is before the rainfall stimulation was started. Then uh, the following figure in B was taken 49 minutes after the rainfall was started. And here we can see first traces, first signs of the groundwater level that is reaching the surface in the middle part of the base. Uh, 51 minutes after the rainfall was started, the entire base was submerged as shown in these figures. You can see traces of the groundwater level here and, and of course the, the entire base is submerged. While the first instability was observed only after 56 minutes of constant rainfall intensity, it occurred in the form of a small rotational um, landslide that occurred at, uh, in the foot of the slope as shown is in, in these uh, figures. And after that, um, after this uh, further instabilities, oops, I'm sorry. After this further instabilities occurred in the form of retrogressive slides that advance up to the top of the slope in a relatively short uh, period of time. This is the second example, and it deals with the hydraulic pads and the reduction of the shear strength of the soil due to rainfall infiltration. Uh, basically, it uh, encompasses hydraulic response and stress states that the scale slope um, inclined at uh, 40 degrees, uh, slope that is built uh, of sand kaolin mixture, uh, where 15% of kaolin was added to clean sand in gravimetric terms. Um, and so conditions that undergoes under simulated uh, uh, rainfall conditions, uh, which are described <coughs> in this figure at the top. So in this, te this test, continuous rainfall intensity of around 20 millimeters per hour was interrupted by 10 minutes breaks to observe hydraulic response of the slope. Of, of the slope. Um, 
there are numerical markers, uh, numerations that um, that uh, serve as reference points to follow the course of the experiment when the the data is presented in different um, uh, different planes and uh, in different forms. Uh, for the sake of brevity, hydraulic pad is shown only for one monitoring profile for points M6, M18 locating, uh, located in the middle section of the model, as uh, these monitored points uh, were equipped with a pair of Teros 10 and Teros 31 um, uh, sensors, both changes in uh, soil suction and volumetric water content uh, are available throughout the test. And having simultaneous measurements from mini tensiometers and tether props at the same depth, it was possible to reconstruct hydraulic pads, uh, hydraulic conditions at two monitor points during the test. Here you can see changes in the volumetric water content and uh, also changes in pore water pressure, that is, changes in soil suction. Uh, for the point that is uh, that was located at six centimeters below the slope surface, and here for the point located 80, uh, 18 centimeters below the slope surface in M profile. Uh, this graph shows how um, infiltration of rainfall affects shear strength of the soil by reducing its effective stresses at monitored uh, points. Initial stress state and corresponding shear strength um, located on the right hand uh, side of the pad reflect soil moisture content conditions at the start of the test before the rainfall was uh, the rainfall simulation started. And most of these conditions are reached during the model construction and are mostly kept constant until the start of the test. With the onset of rainfall infiltration, volumetric water content uh, will increase and dissipation of matric uh, suction will take place in form of a transient uh, process. So if a simplified assumption is made uh, that the capillary is, capillarity is the only retention mechanism, uh, reduction in the effective stress during rainfall infiltration can be quantified from the data, from the volumetric water content and pore water pressure data during uh, the test, which, are, which, which were observed, which were recorded. For example, by using Bishop's correction for the effective stress for unsaturated soils, where the effective uh, stress uh, parameter was said to be equal to the effective degree of saturation, residual volumetric water content set to 0.05 based on observations from other tests on the same type of soil, and uh, saturated volumetric water content was, um, was uh, set according to the uh, soil moisture measurements during the test at these two uh, depths. So in this graph, movement from right to left indicates that the matrix action is reducing while the saturation of soil is increasing. And two crosses, uh, add, uh, two, two crosses on the left side of stress paths represent the effective states, um, uh, stress state at observed points at the beginning of the the test, but without consideration of, uh, without correction of the effective stress for unsaturated uh, soil condition that is as defined by uh, Terzinov. And from here, I would like to close this presentation by providing some uh, some discussion and conclusion. So two, two examples were singled out among the many of the results that were obtained through var various tests and research activities on the project. Um, the data obtained was presented and analyzed to describe hydrological response of slope models and interpreted in the context of instability mechanism of scaled slope models exposed to controlled rainfall infiltration conditions. Uh, of course, understanding the triggering mechanisms as well uh, as the mathematical description of process of uh, uh, pr processes that are controlling the transient uh, uh, infiltration process and how uh, what what is its effect on slope stability requires complete knowledge of relevant soil properties uh, or better say soil functions and thus further important step uh, is uh, advanced hydromechanical characteriz characterization of all soils that were used in the study. Uh, 
So the first example showed how the data on changes in soil moisture can provide accurate, um, apparently also instantaneous insight into different stages of moisture content increase during different uh, phases of transient infiltration, as well as the subsequent groundwater level rise. And these results were placed in the context of initiation of scale sandy slope due to the uh, groundwater level rise. Uh, the data uh, on the observed hydraulic response, known initial and boundary conditions, can be used as valuable tool for establishing relationships in scale slope models and investigation of the conditions and mechanisms the leading to slope failure. The second example investigated hydraulic pads and uh, stress conditions that were exhibited by the scale slope built of St. Caroline mixture during uh, simulated rainfall conditions. And uh, the results showed how simultaneous observation of the soil moisture and water pressures when um, used or embedded in appropriate work, uh, working concepts can provide valuable insights into hydraulic pads and stress states that are experienced by the slope model during closely controlled rainfall infiltration conditions. Um, something that is uh, also very interesting is that the results interpreted in soil suction versus volumetric water content plane um, for the monitor points indicate that the soil is undergoing, uh, exhibits uh, hysteresis effects as it undergoes multiple drying wetting cycles. And this is something that uh, suggests the possibility of using uh, this kind of downscale uh, physical slope models or even full scale uh, models if we are considering only the, the unsaturated zone of the slope to investigate the role of hydraulic hysteresis uh, and its effects on behavior of slopes in their response under different rainfall patterns, uh, I would say in general because we are talking about downscale slope models. Uh, to be honest, uh, scale, we did some scaling with all these elements you could see, but uh, uh, for example, we, we uh, said that our scale is one to 20. So if we have, uh, we, have uh, uh, we, we adopted 30 centimeters of height in all of our slope models to have some height available in case there is some kind of uh, rapid movement or, or, or fast uh, instability in our models. But um, uh, uh, there is another colleague of mine who is trying to basically link those uh, scaling of all these elements and how they act uh, in this kind of, of, of physical models. So this was basically one-to-one -one interpretation so far. And the scaling is something that um, has to be done uh, in, in the, as future work, I would say. So the scaling was done geometrically so far in in the sense that we said, okay, if we have sliding surface uh, at 30 centimeters of that, it will be something like six meters in nature, but, but uh, everything else, um, how um, these measurements can be scaled to real case slopes is the work to be done, I would say, uh, in the following, following period. Uh, in a sense that uh, have we, we checked that the, the required density was achieved or so we were, we were using uh, under compaction method uh, in a way that we would mix a certain amount of um, dry material with the required amount of water, and then we would compact it until reaching uh, required height using less under compaction so that we achieve more or less homogeneous uh, density in our models related to, to both density and um, homogeneity in terms of the volumetric water content. Of course, it was not, it wasn't always possible as I indicated, uh, for example, it was much easier with, with uh, clay-like soils, but with uh, clean sand, it was quite hard to achieve a, a constant uh, yeah, soil moisture condition in, in profile. Uh, yes, well, basically we are, uh, uh, all these uh, sprinkler branches are adjustable in height and also in, in position. So uh, what we try uh, to achieve is as homogeneous rainfall conditions as possible 
in the sense, but uh, of course, sometimes we have uh, uh, part of the simulated rainfall that is uh, going on side uh, plexiglass, plexiglass side walls and sometimes a bit out from the model. So we, we did some kind of um, measurement of co coefficient of uniformity for uh, this rainfall. Uh, we had uh, two type of, well, let's say, uh, the problem was uh, twofold. One was that um, we tried to control that uh, all the rainfall that was applied um, would uh, infiltrate into the soil and that no superficial uh, um, runoff would be generated when uh, applying uh, rainfall with our simulator. And this is something that limited uh, basically the number of um, spraying nozzles we are using. And this is why here we have one central row of, of these uh, sprinkler element, elements in our models. But then hom uh, homogeneity or, or uniformity of the simulated rainfall becomes a problem as uh, we also measure that, that in central part, we have somewhat a higher amount of rainfall than uh, at sides or, con or corners of our model. So um, yes, it's something that we are normalizing for square meter of model, but uh, we are aware that central part might be receiving or uh, definitely receives somewhat, somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, higher amount of rainfall. And, um, um, and uh, in fact, we are, we, uh, we are trying, our intention is maybe to try performing 3D type of analysis uh, to uh, see uh, how we get a uh, response in numerical models and compare those with what was measured. So uh, trying to get that influence uh, of 3D and non-uniformity in rainfall intensity in our models. So basically, if we observe any deflections in the plexiglass sidewalls, yes, if I understand correctly. Uh, well, yeah, of, of course, thank you for the question. Uh, there were some iterations, I would say, when we were designing our uh, flume. Basically, these elements were added after the first test, which was uh, conducted back in, I think, 2019. Uh, somewhere at the end, if I'm not wrong, uh, because yes, we observed some uh, deformations in our uh, plexiglass walls, and then we used a bit thicker, like one centimeter uh, thick uh, plexiglass side walls. It was kind of iteration uh, uh, in terms both of connections here in this part and these uh, uh, these elements, steel elements that would provide required. Um, uh, let's say strength uh, uh, of, of the entire model so that these would not be observed. So, so yes, we observed some problems, but I would say that these were solved during the, with each test, we would find some better solutions, some better approach. For example, at, at the start of the project, we were using some tensile elements here. Um, but uh, very soon we, we observed that it is kind of a visual obstacle for our uh, measurement system and non-contact uh, uh, system of, of high-speed cameras. So there, there were for sure several uh, stages of, uh, I would say, improvement of our uh, flume, of our model. Thank you. Thank you.